Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, and it's time to take a look at what's trending this week in the world of wrestling right here on Takedown. Well, we're just a few months removed from the Rio Games, but for the U.S. freestyle team, the offseason is over. A number of America's top stars were back in Colorado Springs over the week, and the first training camp kicked off to a brand new four-year cycle. USA Wrestling's Taylor Miller stopped by the OTC to talk with Frank Molinaro, Aaron Pico, Kyle Snyder, and a rejuvenated Jordan Burroughs. Here with Kyle Snyder at the Olympic Training Center. Kyle, talk about why you're out here this week and what your goals are. Yeah, I'm out here for a national team training camp. Uh, it's pretty fun getting to wrestle around with some of the guys that I haven't seen in a while. And goals are just to improve in some positions technically. You know, we've been going over the film from the Olympics and been learning a lot about myself and positions I need to get better at. So uh, it's been pretty fun. So what are some of those areas that you're focusing on? Uh, high, high crotch finishing, uh, just head position and being rigid when you're on the leg. Uh, that's what we've been primarily focusing on the first three days of camp. And uh, getting angles on your feet is always something I need to get better at. But that's primarily what we've been working on so far. How's life been since the Olympics? It's been really good. I, I took a, about a week off and then kind of eased back into it. Um, but it's, it was a very motivating experience for me. Uh, it really kind of just made me want to get back in there. And you know, I saw how far away I was to meddling and I, and I can see my progress. And, you know, I just want to get back in there and make gains. What are some things that you learned about yourself and your wrestling during your Olympic journey? Kind of really just my, you know, I just really wasn't scared to compete. Um, you know, how, how much fun I have, you know, just the whole vulnerability of competing and the whole, the pressure of the Olympics and everything. I, you know, I think I handled it well and, you know, it gives me a lot of confidence being able to enjoy that. You know, it's pretty easy moving forward. Talking about that uh, knee a little bit, you know, what you've sort of been through over the past few months. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you on the mat. So. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been, but it's actually been fun though. It's been, you know, to get my, t uh, get my body a, a time to rest has been great. That's what I needed. I've been on the go a while. So uh, since surgery, I've gotten, I've gotten actually really stronger. I've been working my upper body like crazy, uh, watching my weight. Uh, I, like, I, like I was just telling you, I lost a bunch of weight and it's, it feels kind of nice, you know? So uh, it, I've been positive. That's the main thing is, you know, if you sit here and like poor me, my, you know, I had surgery, uh, that's the wrong approach. But I've been positive. I've got great trainers around me. I've got a great therapist that I've been working with. For, uh, for quite some time, so, um, you know, just taking it one day at a time, so. What's your um, outlook moving forward as far as your timetable for return, I guess? Uh, let's see, I, I still got about another, like, eight months, you know, until I'm, like, you know, fully probably released, but uh, maybe, you know, I, I'm starting to light box, so that's good. I'm free to do whatever I want, upper body, doing light squatting and things like that, but as far as, I'm starting to run, jump rope, it's good, but as far as like drilling, things like that, I still have a while, but um, you know, my, luckily my doctors are, I'm in contact with them a lot, so they're just like, you know, guiding me the right way, so whatever they say, I'm, I'm doing, so. This is my first time back on the mat since the Olympic Games, and so I took some time off, spent numerous weeks and months with my family, just enjoying some time that I didn't really get to enjoy through the busy Olympic year, and so, yeah, we're back here on the match, just learning some new positions, trying to get better overall and continue to evolve as a wrestler. How has your, your perspective or your take on wrestling changed since your Olympic journey? That's a good question. I'd say really just having more fun, trying to have more fun, being less burdened by pressure and anxiety, expectations. I mean, no one's expectations are as high for me as they are within myself, for myself. I think that it's going to be fun, though. I mean, I'm getting a little bit older, and so I really want to enjoy my life in terms of more balance. I would say I'm focused on the sport. If I'm going to be engaged in wrestling and involved with the sport, I'm going to do my best to be my best. But also, I want to enjoy everything outside of the wrestling form and the wrestling arena. And so that means spending time with family, um, you know, being able to see people that I haven't seen through you know years of focus and dedication to the sport and my craft. So. Yeah, just a little bit more openness, overall happiness, um, and just enjoying these moments. It, I probably got another four years left in me, so one more cycle, and then I'm probably done officially.
Special thanks to Taylor Miller, Richard Immel, and our friends at USA Wrestling. For more coverage of the OTC action and all that's going on with Team USA, check out their YouTube channel and also themat.com. Our wrestling coverage will continue after the short time out. Fans, you're watching Takedown thanks to Yellow Blue Ecotech. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Well, coming off a third straight conference title and a second place national finish, Oklahoma State will start the year ranked number one in the Intermet preseason poll. The Cowboys are led by defending national champ Dean Heil and will have a total of eight projected All-Americans in their starting lineup. From the Oklahoma State Athletic Department, here's head coach John Smith and his squad on the expectations heading in to 2016. You know, in several polls come out one, uh, anywhere from one to three. That's probably about where we are. Um, seems like the majority of our guys are, are between five and 12. You know, and you, uh, you know that uh, in the end, you need to shrink that down. Uh, five to 12 is not a lot of points in the end. So we need to move some guys into superstar status a little bit. You know, we, we're missing that uh, Alex Derringer coming in that you look at and you're going, it's going to be hard to beat this guy. I don't think we have anyone that you look at and it's going, it's going to be hard to beat. Um, so hopefully we, we develop a couple of those guys to, to kind of give us a kick start, somebody to follow and somebody that uh, can lead the way in how we want to compete. I mean, I know you got competition, but you have a lineup in mind? Not yet. I think, I think you, you probably can name eight of them, um, but sometimes you do a little bit of injustice to the guys that are trying to compete for the spot, you know, and you, and you announce that, hey, I think these are the 10. You know, you just want to make sure they know and respect that, uh, you know, you got a shot at this and I'm going to give you that shot and I'm not going to announce my lineup until somebody proves it, you know. Um, I think we're, we're pretty set on Cade Brock at, at, at uh, 33. I think um, there's a good chance that Joseph's the guy at 57, uh, Colic at 49, Boyd at 84, and 
That's about it. Led by NCAA runner-up Bryce Meredith, the Wyoming Cowboys could have the most difficult schedule in the country. Here's head coach Mark Branch and senior Brandon Tribble. We're in the room, and, and we're going to be in the room, and we're going to be grinding, and, and we start getting used to that grind. But right now, um, the practices go a little bit long. Uh, we got to get a lot of technique in, in in the next three or to four weeks before we start competing. So there's a lot of work to be done and not a lot of time. Um, with the season, you know, starting October 10th, it really puts you under the gun to, to uh, try to get prepared. And we won't. Um, we never do, and that's not the plan. It takes, it takes months to really get prepared, but we still want to be as competitive as we can be on November 5th for the Cowboy Open. Uh, so that's our focus right now is just getting some work done, getting our wrestling shape underneath us, and, and really um, working on some of the basics of our technique. You know, we're excited for this season, and you have to be in good shape to be on the mat. And so uh, before we get on the mat, we wanted to make sure that we were in good shape. So we were you know, running around learning me, getting prepared for today. Um, you know, today is yeah, part two of our preseason, and we're excited to get started. We learned a lot uh, last year being in the Big 12. Um, we, we realized how competitive it, it is year in, year out, but that tournament was a learning experience for us. I think you, you really point towards the tournament. Um, our regular season schedule doesn't really change too much. Um, but we did we did add Iowa State last year, and then we have Iowa State coming to Laramie this year. So that's a, that's great for our program, and, and um, that's some of the perks of being in a conference like the Big 12. So um, you know those are things that we're looking forward to. Um, this year's tournament is is uh, going to be a great preparation for the NCAA tournament. Uh, it's going to be a great venue, and, and um, the uh, Tulsa Sports Commission has really rolled out the red carpet for the Big 12, and and so we're, we're all, I think, pretty fired up about the future of this wrestling conference. Our Big 12 coverage continues after this short timeout. Stay tuned. You're watching Takedown, brought to you by KC General Stores. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. Cookies, sauces, and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is cookies flavor enhancer and all-purpose seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies, For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Well, when he arrived on campus just a few short years ago, Chris Bono's top goal 
was to change the culture at South Dakota State. The Jacks have been among the most innovative programs in the country when it comes to marketing and promotion, which has led to more fan support and much higher expectations on the mat. In the newest episode of SDSU All Access, Athletic Director Justin Sell and several upperclassmen talked about the team's mentality under Coach Bono. It's, it's amazing uh, the growth uh, and excitement around our wrestling program to think back you know, four or five years ago and uh, with the addition of Coach Bono. And anytime you get somebody that has a huge vision of what things can be and then certainly has the experience, competed at an international level, national champion in college, and then you attract people like that. So you bring on guys like John Reeder and A.J. Shop, uh, And so it's a whole team approach. And then you start recruiting in that first recruiting class. Uh, and it takes a little while to to get those freshmen ready to go and when you think about the last three or four years and that growth and progress the excitement around the state of South Dakota for the sport of wrestling uh, the excitement uh, in our department about wrestling and what it's doing and then the commitment we've had from the guys in the room we are so close to having uh, the All-Americans national champions and then being able to be a top 10 program in the country. All right, yeah, My first year was uh, Bono's first year so I've been here since the start of this program and it's a world of different now from where it was at. Uh, the culture has just completely changed. Everybody wants to win. Uh, everybody's got each other's back. We all hold each other accountable, uh, not only on the mat, but in the classroom, socially. This is a group of guys that really connects and really just wants the best for each other. So it's like nothing I've ever been a part of before. These guys are my family, and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Um, yeah, obviously things have gotten uh, a lot better since my uh, first time on campus here. Found through some coaching changes, which have been really good, and uh, we also have joined the Big 12, which has been awesome for our program. We got ranked as a team for the first time ever last year, so this summer, this mindset, uh, a lot of guys stuck around. We trained hard all summer and just kept in mind that this team can do some special things, and we just want to don't waste any years with all the guys we have together and just want to take advantage of it. And, do what, we, do what we can do, and we know we can be a top 10 team in the country, so that's our mindset. Get them back down, girls. Get them back down. Come on, Hollis. Get ready to win. Hips up. Yeah, I think any time you've got, wrestling is such a unique sport because that one-on-one -on -one work and who your workout partner is matters and how good you can be. Um, and you challenge each other. And when you've got a guy in the room that was a national champion and then is still trying to make Olympic teams and compete at the highest international level, uh, and then a guy of the quality of John Reeder and, and the character, his ability to coach and teach. Uh, but when our guys are wrestling every day against him, there is no way that they're not getting better. And the beauty beauty is the day they're able to beat him is the day you know you can be a national champion. Uh, and so I couldn't be more excited to have a guy like John Reeder in our program. What you want. Good job. That's what you want. This group of freshmen is unlike any other group. Uh, they, they just came in and uh, started working hard. Some of these guys are you know pushing uh, us seniors and, and juniors and they're just uh, they're hard workers uh, in the run, in the lift and they catch on fast and it's just great to have them as workout partners and as family. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. I mean, I got a chance to host a lot of them on their recruiting trips and they're all really good kids and they're the kind of kids we want in our program. Good kids, hard working, and they get good grades in school and are going to bring up the reins and uh, our goals as far as being Big 12 champs and getting All-Americans and national champions. I, you know, my expectations uh, in regards to all of our programs is uh, continue in the process, do the right things, work hard, um, have a vision, work towards that vision. Uh, things don't happen just overnight. It's, it's the long fight that matters, and that's where Chris and John and AJ have done such a good job is over the last several years we put ourselves in that position. Uh, expectation this year is continue to take another step forward, and that opportunity with our home schedule and the, t and the teams that are coming in here and competing against the the best in the nation, uh, the opportunity to have an All-American and honestly to have a first national champion. I would love to see those things happen and, and so I couldn't be more excited heading into the season. Uh, it's going to be a great year and even more importantly we have such a bright future ahead of us. We've got a lot of big duels this year and uh, we just got to take advantage of them and do what we can do with them and uh, get down to the NCAA tournament and get a top 10 finish. Uh, this team deserves to win. I know that this team is uh, put in the work and, and good things are going to come. So, Big 12 champs, um, 
national titles. That's what's coming our way. So. Remember that. You guys on track? We're going to win. Remember that. All right. I'll see you guys. Hey, stay tuned. We'll be back after the short timeout. You're watching Takedown, powered by Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. In this arena, you're either the hunter or the hunted. A hunter needs armor. Earn the right to be a Danmar warrior. Headgear forged in the industrial north for the toughest wrestlers of all ages. Born in the US of A, work with us to make your custom headgear. Warriors take hits. For better breathing and vision, stay tough with the Warrior Face Guard. Dan Mark. Warriors need it. Warriors earn it. Well, another Ohio native has been added to the All-Star Classic lineup. It'll be NC State's Max Roskopf making his 157-pound debut against Michigan All-American Brian Murphy. He joins us now from Raleigh, North Carolina. Max, thanks for the time. How's it going? Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's congratulations, up. man, and you're welcome. Congratulations on the uh, return invitation. Um, there was probably an odds-on favorite for you to be invited, but uh, what was the response like when you were notified that you got the invite? This, Pat didn't even have to say anything. As soon as he showed me the email, I was like, yeah, like I'm going. I don't care who I'm wrestling. It doesn't matter. I knew it was going to be in Cleveland this year, and it'd be the first time for me to go back home and compete in front of my hometown crowd since I've been in high school. So it's been a long time coming, and so I didn't even hesitate when uh, – when I got the offer. What's cool about last year versus this year is that you're actually moving down a weight this year, uh, and you're, you're going to tangle up with uh, 2015 All-American Brian Murphy of Michigan. Have you wrestled him before? No, I've never wrestled Brian. Uh, Brian Murphy, uh, my teammate Tommy Gant, wrestled him last year, and that's pretty much the only time I've ever seen him. I haven't really paid too much attention to that weight class. so. But now i got my eyes on every person's weight, so... I got to ask you, what was your favorite match last year of all the matches during the season? Do you can can you pick one out? Could be a home or away. Uh, probably Tech Ball and David McFadden at home uh, against Virginia Tech. That one was hard too, though, because we still lost the we still lost the dual meet. But I like that one. I like beating uh, I like beating uh, Nebraska at Nebraska too. That was big, uh, and then winning against Oklahoma and uh, Oklahoma State 
and Iowa last year, both away for us, was uh, pretty big. There, I was in so many big dual meet matches last year. I, I really can't pick just one, but those four kind of stick out in my mind. Uh, you played a huge part in NC State's stellar year, the year that was 2015-2016. It's a statement year. Uh, they entered as number five seed at 165 pounds, but was upset early and bounced from the tournament. Did not that's not the way you wanted to end it, is it? No, not at all. That uh, that burn that wasn't easy to do. Uh, that was pretty hard on me, and uh, I think I made the mental adjustments and also the physical adjustments that I needed to make over the summer to make sure that even during the season I'm at a higher level. And that something like that happened at the national tournament will never happen again. Last year, you went 16 and four overall. And I got to believe taking that back to Ohio uh, to start the year off. And that's what the All-Star Classic does. It really kicks off the season. Um, Bring it back. There's got to be a lot of folks coming in from Kilbuck, Ohio. I got people from Holmes County, Wayne County, uh, Tuscarawas County, Coshocton County, people from Mansfield, everywhere. I'm, uh, I'm going to have a big crowd. I'm definitely going to have the biggest crowd there. I guarantee that. I know the folks at uh, Fox Sports Time Ohio are watching this very show. What do you want to tell everybody out there that are watching on Fox Sports Time Ohio? Uh, come out, support your uh, hometown boy, and I promise you're not going to uh, be disappointed because I'm going to put a whooping on that uh, team up north. We won't, we don't, we don't say that, that team name where I'm from. I don't even know where that comes comes from, but that's right. They always say that that state up north or that team uh, from up north. Max Rose Comfort Gas uh, in the Nike hot seat today. He'll be making a return appearance to the All-Star Classic. It's the 51st edition, and we're lucky to have him for sure. It's presented by Brewer Garrett Company. He'll face off against Brian Murphy uh, from the University of Michigan at 157 pounds. So it's going to be new for you. It's going to be new for him. It's going to be new for me. All right, dude, good job out of you. Appreciate your time today in the Nike hot seat. Best to your folks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, Max. Appreciate that. I want to thank USA Wrestling, Oklahoma State, and all of the guests on the program today. By the way, you can check out the balance at takedownwrestle.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook and Twitter, that is, for all the breaking wrestling news as it happens. Join us live Saturday mornings for Takedown Radio. For all of us in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper, and we'll see you next week for another lively edition of Takedown.